Hi everyone, my name is Joanna and I'm a second year PhD student at Northwestern University. I work in a lab on campus developing new medical device technologies, soft electronics, and bioelectronics, which are essentially electronic devices that interface with humans or other living things. I'm going to take you to my lab now and then I can show you around. Let's go! One of the research projects that I work on is the development of a medical device that will detect when a person is overdosing from drugs by looking at the amount of oxygen in their blood and rescues that person by providing emergency medication called naloxone or Narcan. The device has a component called an oximeter that shines light and measures how much is reflected to know how much oxygen is in the blood. It's a pretty cool concept and it's actually used all the time in hospitals and other settings today. You might have heard of a similar concept which is called pulse oximetry and it's what I'm demonstrating in this clip. Every time the researchers in my laboratory come to work, we measure this as a precaution because of COVID-19. When someone's overdosing from taking too much of a harmful drug, the amount of oxygen in their blood drops dramatically, so this is how the device is triggered. Our lab was actually featured on the news for these devices, and I got to be on TV because I'm one of the team members working on them. Here's a clip. The first responders administering naloxone, a life-saving drug, to someone who has overdosed. But what if the addict's alone at the time of an, of an overdose? One Northwestern University professor has developed an implantable device that would administer the drug when it senses that a person is overdosing. That's why Professor John Rogers and his team on the Northwestern campus are developing this implant that is smaller than a pacemaker. Let me show you how they're made. This is what our fully assembled devices look like. They contain plastic pieces and very complex electronic circuitry, including those oximeters which are able to measure the amount of oxygen in the blood. Going back to the beginning, first we have to assemble and modify each of the pieces individually. So here I am drilling holes into plastic pieces that will later be assembled. This allows the devices to be filled with the medicine that it carries, naloxone, later on. I also use a laser cutting machine to precisely cut various items in the lab, and I use what's called a spin coder to make very thin sheets of flexible and stretchy polymers that go into our devices or other ones. Next, I'll show you how I make one of these polymers, which is called polydimethylsiloxane, or PDMS. These polymers are soft and stretchy, so we use them to encapsulate our devices, which means to add an exterior layer to them so that nothing sharp or hard is sticking out. First, I weigh the polymer and then I use a special mixer to mix the two components that go into it so they're mixed up very, very well. When it finishes, I can pour it into whatever shape I need it to be. In this case, I'm adding it to two different molds, which we custom make in our lab using what's called a CNC milling machine. machine is like a big drill controlled by a computer. It can make all different shapes in a block of plastic or metal just by slowly drilling down into the material. 
Once we have the polymer in our mold, we have to get rid of any bubbles that might be trapped, otherwise they could ruin our encapsulation. I put the molds into a vacuum desiccator and open a valve that pulls very high suction, making the pressure inside of that desiccator very low, which is kind of similar to outer space. By lowering the air pressure inside of the container, these bubbles rise out of the sticky polymer and then I can use an air gun to blow short bursts of air onto the bubbles and pop them at the top surface. Once that's done, we put the polymer into an oven to bake it, which is called curing. It turns into a solid that's not sticky anymore. So now I can sh remove the pieces from the mold and I can show you that they're stretchy and flexible. When I make the drug delivery devices, I have to prepare them first, then put them into their mold and add the sticky polymer. Then I add a covering which stays on while they cure and the finished products look like this. Once they're removed and filled, you can see the part where their medicine goes inside, it's blue. We also test the devices. This is a clip of the wireless oximeter working and another clip of a different version where I'm testing with my finger. You can see the red light coming through my fingernail, which is part of the test working. We can control the devices with a computer interface and use it to run other experiments that ensure that the devices work correctly, including this one where the device is stored underwater and monitored for a long time to make sure it will keep working. We have to prove that the device re releases the medicine, so I also get to produce other videos like this one. This is probably my favorite part of work. You can see the blue liquid leaving the device and the blue liquid is like the medicine that the device ejects. Outside of lab, as a PhD student, I take many classes, like this one about defects or non-perfect parts of materials. Beyond the help of resurrectors, they, in, they embraced having opposite burgers vectors. One of the coolest parts of my experiences so far was actually learning to operate a fire extinguisher in case there's a fire in my lab. This is my friend Maddie demonstrating. <laughs> sure. I might do a lot of research, but I also have hobbies outside of the lab. These include photography, taking care of my many plants, reading, and taking care of my kitten. Her name's Ruth. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Bye! Spin coder. Whoa.